Hi, this is Chris Legaspi, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to shade faces using value shapes. Now, you might be wondering what are value shapes, and we'll get into that. And uh, I'm also going to talk about why they're important and, you know, why would you want to use them. Now, for my line of work, I do movie poster illustration. Some of the um, recent projects I've done are Deadpool 2, Son of Shaft, and more recently, uh, Birds of Prey. For movie poster work, the deadlines are really, really tight. So I need to be able to draw uh, actors' faces with likeness, with accuracy, with realism, and I need to do it fast. And value shapes is one of the ways um, that I do that. All right, so I think number one, what's helping me is the paper. So this is a Strathmore tone paper sketchbook. It's, it's, my, it's in my sketchbook. So right away, tone paper does help. It's not necessary. You can, you can do this. I've done this same idea on plain white paper, and there's a lot of advantages to using white paper as well. But uh, for this instance, blocking in values, establishing values to get that realism, because values, realism comes from really good value control and establishing a good value harmony. The, the tone paper helps. So right away, this tone paper gives me a nice, a light mid-tone to work with. And luckily, this the subject matter is already at a light mid-tone because the face is in shadow. And the tools I'm going to use to push my value, establish my values, are mostly colored pencil. So this is the, the ballpoint pen I used here to block in my uh, the line drawing. Now I'm going to block in the mid-tone. Excuse me, light half tone. And I'm going to do it with a hatching technique. Of course, you don't have to use hatching technique. You don't have to use this grip. But what's important is the quality of the tone. And, um, you know, I, ooh, whoops. That was a light shape. Whoops, I got too excited there. So <laughs> the quality of the tone is what's important. See, luckily, um, I didn't press too hard. So I was able to lift that off right away. So what's unique about this is that there's a... Um, the main light source is upper left. In this case, it's the sun. And I am drawing from reference. And it's a shot from a, a TV series. So it kind of has that theatrical kind of quality. And obviously, uh, the realism, or excuse me, the, the reference helps me to get the realism. And, um, or at least in terms of the shapes, that's a whole other topic. Okay, so I just blocked in a tone. Now, what's important is look at how the quality of it. It's, it's even. And yes, there's gaps, but the, the gaps, overall, it's even. So that's, that's a skill that you need to come to the table with, is being able to lay an even tone with whatever material you're using. In this case, I'm using colored pencil. So nice, even tone. Your technique really doesn't matter. It's the quality of the tone that matters. All right? Boom. Done. So the next step is, um, what am I established the value range? Dark is dark. Light is light. How dark can I go? How light can I go? And I'm right away, I want my dark to be at this eye. So I'm just going to pop that in. Pop it in. With my black colored pencil and it'd be very careful having a little bit of edge control so that's another little topic is the edge control let me sharpen my pencil 
one of the tools you absolutely need if you're going to be in um, uh, a professional, especially in the movie poster business, as <laughs> a pencil sharpener. Don't underestimate that, the long lid. So right away I go, okay. This is pretty much as dark as I can go. Now, how light can I go? Well, I have two choices. I can either, looking at my reference, I can either go block in my light. Oh, that's a little too harsh. Block in my light, my lightest light at the rim light or at the main light, the spotlight here. The, um, the key light. It's called the key light, your primary light. And you know what? I'm just going to kick it in the main light. I'm going to use my pastel because my... Using my pastel here. You can use Prisma colored pencil. It's my favorite pencil. You should have been more careful here. Oh, I should gonna. Whoops. Luckily, uh, the very thin can be erased to some extent. Boom. Boom. Done. So, dark is dark, light is light. Now we just kind of got to refine what I have. And we'll be almost done. Okay, last thing is kind of refine the statement that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my darkest dark and just see where else I need to bring up the darkness. Is that a word, bring up the darkness? Sounds like a song. But, um, you know, what, what, what can be darker to help, help my read, help my forms read? So right away, um, our our um, our model here, this actress, has black hair. So I'm gonna punch that in with my Prisma color black. And you see how. And I can go even darker than that. I'm just choosing not to. Boom. Boom. I feel pretty good about that. Now, th this can go darker as well. Highlight in her hair. You know. Highlight in, a, in black hair. It's not going to be that bright. So I'm going to just knock that down. Darken it up. Bring the value closer. And then the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to render. I'm not going to add um, um, I'm not going to do hardcore modeling. It was a little bit of light I want to catch on the nose here. That's one disadvantage of drawing small like this and drawing small drawing small has the advantage that um, can be a little bit faster but the disadvantage obviously is hard to get details All right, all right. Okay, so now I got to reestablish that, that little light on her nose. So what I'm going to do now is just add some variation to my tone, make some areas. See, this is all one shape to me. This is all one shape, the shadow of her face. I'm just going to add a little bit of variation just to make it a little bit more interesting and suggest the planes. I'm not going to render planes. I'm going to suggest planes. 
little swatches of value, little basically gradations. That's the name of the game. Gradations is like is the real secret sauce to rendering, to shading, is gradations. And the quality of your gradations and the shape of your gradations determines really the quality of your rendering. See this right here feels a little uh, dark for what I'm doing. This area. So a lot of light coming in from the left. So I want to suggest that. This is where the colored, this is the advantage of the colored pencil. But you know, you don't, um, excuse me, tone paper is you can do this quickly add the white, but you don't, you don't need it at, at all really. Although it does, you know, does save some time. And finally, this one last plane, the side plane of the orbicularis oris, the mouth, the mouth, the muzzle, the mouth section, the mouse structure. It's a structure, it's a plane. This is really it, my friends. This is really it. This is subtle side plane, indicate side plane of the nose, side plane of the muzzle, subtle side plane of the cheek in shadow, and subtle side plane of the neck. And boom, I'm going to call this a day. Now for my purposes, for uh, as a sketch artist, I would, I would, um, this would totally satisfy the needs. Obviously, obviously, it's not a, it's not a polished render, but it's establishing the value. I got my lightest light, darkest dark, my core shadow, light plane, and I've essentially done this. This is what I have. I have the mid-tone. I have this value, shadow. I have this value. I have this value and this value. So I blocked in these. There's nuances within these. There's gradations between these. But once I have these, um, I'm good to go. This is enough to tell the story of what I need to tell, which is get the read, woman, female face, um, key light, bounce light, form, light and value pattern, expression, um, Right, we can you know we can obviously go further, refine further, um, but in terms of getting the realism quickly, using value, intelligent value, intelligent design, value design, value structure, and good technique and and helpful materials, I think I've accomplished that. Okay, that's the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching. In the next video. We're going to talk about ways to get more accuracy and likeness. This time we're going to use exaggeration as a tool. So stay tuned. And if you want to learn more about the movie poster industry, maybe you've always wanted to draw movie posters. Maybe you want to draw comic book covers, do freelance illustration, or even uh, portrait commissions. Definitely check out my new online class. In this class, I'll not only be teaching the skills needed to be a professional artist, so how to draw better faces, how to draw better heads, how to get a likeness, how to draw and invent figures with costumes and fabric, but also the business side of art. So you learn not only the skills, but actually how to make money with those skills. So if you want to learn more, all you have to do is go to my website, www.drawwithchris.com, and there you'll be able to see 
the available classes and workshops. And until next time, don't forget to smash that like button and let me know in the comments below uh, what you're struggling with, with your faces, with your heads, and what you're currently working on and what, what do you want to learn next. So until next time, get out there, keep drawing, and build up that mileage. Bye for now.